Hi everybody, I'm Chris and my research paper is about the NASA robotic mining competition. The first part of my research paper is to explain what the competition is, why it's important, uh, a little bit of the history behind it. The second half goes into successful designs for a robot. It's a annual competition at the Kennedy Space Center that is a competition between about 50 schools or so and it's a simulated Martian environment where these schools design these robots to compete in this arena and each team builds a robot that navigates through the arena and digs up some, some soil and brings it back and returns it. And they score you based on a, diff a few different things. The purpose of this is twofold. It's to come up with like efficient designs for off-planet mining, and also mainly to engage students and the public in robotics and the need to do stuff like this, to, to get off-planet and mine asteroids or mine the moon, other planets. One of the big things that drove this was uh, a few years ago, in 2008 or 2009, NASA did this mission called LCROSS. They sent a spacecraft to the moon ejected the empty rocket that would hit the moon and a big dust cloud would come up. And they would analyze this dust cloud to see what was in it and they found there was gold in there, there was platinum, there was a, a lot of water on the moon, which is very important for any astronauts if they want to survive for drinking water and also to be used as rocket propellant to return home. It's important for students before they're involved in their career to get a taste for doing stuff like this to see what it's all about and it's important to engage the public. It shows that this isn't some far-fetched sci-fi idea. It gets people interested in STEM, science, technology, engineering and math. Part of the competition is showing the public and students ex exactly like this uh, what it's all about. When we compete in this competition, they score you based on how efficient your robot is really, how much it weighs, uh, how much it's able to mine and bring back, uh, the communications between the robot and where you are, because you don't get to see the robot. They stick you off in some room somewhere else, just this empty room with a TV screen. And you have, to, you have this thing and you just have to control your robot based on the TV screen. Or you could design your robot to be autonomous, where it can sense the arena around it, it can figure out, it knows how to dig, it knows how to return, which is uh, a lot more complicated, but it's worth a lot more points. This robot is an older model. I can move it around, I hope I have it. I don't want to move it. But, um, so this is going to be similar to uh, our current design, this, the, the top half was a little bit different for the old model. That right there is a prototype of what it's gonna look like. That's actual size. It's gonna be a lot smaller than this guy. The first time we did this, it was the bottom half with another part, and that part would go like this, and there were scoops on it, so it would just drive forward and scoop up and close itself like that. This year, we're trying to go for a sleeker design, a more cost-efficient design. That's not necessarily the perfect way to do it, that's just the way that we're coming up with this year. So this has just been a, a research project that I've been working on for this semester and I decided to write a paper about it and that's uh, essentially what the paper's about. All right, thank you very much.